This video is an introduction to organic chemistry. We are going to discuss the hybridization of carbon, resonance structures, and a little bit about acidity and basicity of organic compounds. Let's start with carbon. Carbon is capable of forming four bonds in organic chemistry, most of the time. So as you can see here, methane has formed four bonds. All these four bonds here are single bonds. And if you have a single bond, it's always sigma bond. If we move to the second example, we see that the carbon-carbon has formed a double bond. Keep in mind that one of these bonds, by seeing this scheme here, is sigma bond, that is in the middle, head-on bonds. But the second one are on the side, and these side bonds are called P bonds. So one is P and one is sigma. So if it's one, it's always sigma. If you have more than one, others are P bonds. And let's move to, a, this is called also double bond. This is called triple bond. In this case, there is only one sigma. It is not possible to create two sigma bonds. And two P bonds perpendicular with each other. So this one with this one, and this one with this one. So there are two P bonds. So in this triple bond, you have two P bonds and one sigma bond. But how you are going to find the hybridization of the carbon? There is a simple trick by using the steric number. Steric number is the number of sigma bonds plus number of lone pairs around the central atom. So in the first case, here, the hybridization of this carbon it's number, only the number of sigma bonds because we do not have any lone pair around the central atom in, the case, in this case carbon. So it's going to be four steric number. For methane is four. This means that it uses one s orbital and three p orbitals in order to form these four equivalent energetically unshaped bonds. So in this case, you have an sp3 carbon. In the second case, be careful, hybridization does not deal with P bonds. P bonds does not undergo hybridization. Only sigma bonds and lone pairs around the central atom. So in the second case, these two carbons are equivalent as you can see. Let's count only for the first one. So the, the steric number is going to be what? Number of lone pairs plus number of sigma bonds. This has one sigma bond, two sigma bond, another one here, three three sigma bonds. It does not have lone pairs. So this means that this carbon has a hybridization S. It uses one orbital from S. Always start from the S and go on. S, P, D, and so on. So S and P. How many of P's? Two, because you have only three orbitals possible. So one S and two P. So this carbon in S is SP2 hybridization. And also this one is the same. What about here? In triple bond, in triple bond, you see that the carbon has a steric number equal to two because only one sigma bond and only one hydrogen is involved for counting the hybridization. So in this case, it's going to be sp hybridization. Both these carbons are equivalent, so both are sp hybridized. Let's move now to the resonance structures. They are simple to draw, and the only difference between two resonance structures are the movement of lone pairs and p bonds. As you can see, this lone pair that is here is capable of moving here to form a double bond. In order to maintain the four bonds for the hydrogen, for the carbon, you are going to move one pair, one P bond here to the oxygen atom. And let's rewrite the structure. As you can see here, the only thing that changed is the movement of the lone pair on the carbon and creation of the double bond that is a P bond and movement of a P bond to oxygen atom. Let's take a look at this second example. This lone pair here can move here as a double bond. But this double bond here has to move here as a lone pair because otherwise it will exceed the four bonds for atom because here is hidden one hydrogen. 
Let's rewrite the structure. Do we have any other resonance structure here? Yes. This lone pair here can move here as a double bond, as a P double bond, and this double bond here cannot move as a double bond here because on that way it exceeds the octet for the carbon. Carbon cannot have more than four bonds. It's impossible. So this moves here as a lone pair. So let's rewrite. These arrows with two heads represent resonance structures. So let's rewrite it. Can we make more? No. We cannot move more this lone pair. Let's move now to acid and bases of organic chemistry. Let's take a look at this reaction. Predict the products of this reaction. Keep in mind that most of the compounds that contain nitrogen that has lone pairs are considered organic bases. Also the ones that contain oxygens are considered organic bases. But be careful, in the case that oxygen is directly connected with a hydrogen, on that case there is a polarization due to the difference in electronegativity and this kind of, this kind of compounds are more acidic, are, called, are considered acidic. Let's take a look at this case. This is pyridine, don't worry about the name at this point, and this is acetic acid, a common known compound from the general chemistry. So since this is a base and this is, has a, is an acid, how they are going to react? This lone pair here is going to take with it this hydrogen and this bond here is going to go to the oxygen. So the expected products are these ones. A nitrogen with a hydrogen here and oxygen with a negative charge. Keep in mind something that uh, nitrogen here has four bonds. One, two, three, four. So it's going to have a plus. This is related with the formal charges. Formal charges, as you have learned when you have learned the, to write the Lewis structure, is the number of group minus number of the bonds minus number of the electrons around that atom. So nitrogen is group 5 minus 4 bonds is going to remain plus 1. That's why this has a plus charge. And also for the formal charge for the oxygen is going to be number of group group 6 minus uh, 6 electrons minus 1 bond is going to be minus 1. That's why it's this minus 1 here. Okay, so this is considered as a base, this is considered as an acid. And this one here, according to Branched and Lori, is considered as a conjugated acid, and this one here is considered as a conjugated base. Something related with resonance and uh, the acidity and basicity is the stability of the products. In this case, acetic acid is considered relatively strong acid compared to other organic acids because this acetate base, can you get it base, it is capable of forming another resonance structures by moving this pair here and this pair here, another resonance structures that makes this conjugated base stable. Something important about resonance structures is that when you write resonance structures, you have to be careful not to shift the atoms. So as you can see in this case, are these two structures resonance structures with each other? No, because here we have the movement of one hydrogen from here to here. That is not predicted by the resonance structures. But here, in this case here, yes, they are resonance structures because what has happened? This lone pair has moved here and this P bond has moved here. Okay? 
All right, that's it for this video. Hope it was clear a little bit some concepts about organic chemistry. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Peace.